What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another video. Coach Lee in the house. But before I begin, if you guys want help making money online, um, you guys can hit me up in the description box or my email is there, masculineenergy27 at gmail.com. And you can also hit me up on Instagram. I don't have Instagram on my phone anymore, but um, I do have it on uh, my computer. So uh, I'll check the DMs. But basically, the best way to, e to get to me is email. And the title is, you know, you want to make, make make money online, okay? So, you know, over here, we're at the point of multiple six figures a year. So we're, you know, steady. I'm trying to double my income every year, right? So we're doing pretty well. Agency is beginning. So I'm actually starting another YouTube channel about that stuff. Um, and I will plug it later on. Uh, not in this video, probably in a, in a couple of months or so. I'm trying to grow it without having the influence of this channel <laughs> because um, that will skew, right? Um, some of the stuff that I'm trying to do over there. But basically, it's going to be about documenting like my agency growth. Okay. Um, I'm going into it with an advantage of knowing how to do this stuff for a couple of years. So, anyway, so hit me up in that if you have any questions about that and I can mentor you, A, or have it done for you. But the thing is, I want, I do want to teach you the skills so that you can do it on your own, start a second site or something like that on your own. So anyway, without further ado, let's go. That I have used for years to help people overcome the pain of breakups and trauma from their past. And it is the temporary let go technique. And what it is, is basically it's where you say, I'm going to let this go just for today or I'm going to let this go just for an hour. That's all you think you can do. It's where you give yourself a break from it, but you also practice letting go. It's a way you can be sneaky with yourself. So you're gonna let go, it's okay, I'll come back to it. Don't worry, I'm gonna come back to the hurting and the pain soon. You kind of tell yourself that. I'm not forgetting about it. I'm going to hurt again soon. And I know that sounds a little odd, but you're telling yourself, don't worry, I'm gonna come right back to this. I'm just taking a break. A little bit of a secret behind that is, it's just convincing and believe, making your brain believe that you're in control. A lot of people that come to me during my coaching sessions and stuff like that, they are out of control. They have no idea what to do. They're, they're confused. They're, they're completely run by their emotions. I mean, I had a coaching call yesterday with a guy who, who has had no idea what he was going to do next. So, I mean, at the end of the day, really, it's just about focusing on you and, 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 and that belief right there, which is a pretty cool thing. I mean, I, I, I learned shit from watching him and Corey Wayne and stuff, and that's pretty cool. I, I personally don't do that. I just face it head on. You know, if I were to go through a breakup now, that's what I would do is just right, face it head on. But it is what it is. It's like a vacation from your problems, and it allows you to feel some of the good emotions and it can get your system working that way again. And it's important during this to remind yourself, you're going to come back to this. This is a temporary break because you will actually feel anxiety and fear sometimes when you try not to feel this again, when you try to just not feel the pain. And I'm about to talk more about that, but just, you don't have to go there. You don't have to tell yourself, I'm never going to feel this again. And speaking of not feeling the pain, that is another very, very common thing students do. I, uh, I don't, I don't want to feel this anymore. How do I get over this faster? Right? That's a very common thing. You're just going to take a break. You're just going to give yourself a day, an hour, a break from this and some practice in feeling what it's like to let go. And you can do this as many times as you want. And this lets me go right into number two in that when that feeling comes back, after you've taken your break, an hour, a day, maybe you can make it two days where you just have things on hold and you're going to wallow in the positivity, basically. It's like a little fun break from the breakup. But when it's time and you feel that feeling, this is technique number two. Don't fight the feeling. Don't try to change it. Do your best to observe it as though you're an outsider, like you're just looking at this. And you're going to try to look at this as though you're an outside observer, which is difficult at first because you don't want to let go. You kind of want to own this and sit with your pain. And I understand that. It's almost as though you feel like you're a little bit afraid to get over this in case they come back to you. It's like you don't trust your future self. Like if you were to get over them and then they wanted to get back together with you, you wouldn't want to be with them and so you wouldn't take them back and that makes you sad in this moment because you want them back so much and you want the relationship so much and so you're looking at it in some sort of a time warp way where inside of you deep down if you really look in there and admit this to yourself in some ways you don't want to get over them and you feel like keeping this feeling in some ways is keeping them and so some people have had tremendous success and tremendous realization by realizing that the pain the 
anxiety that they feel in their stomach is actually them wanting to hold on to the relationship and they're afraid to let go of the pain because in some ways they feel like that's all they have left of this other person. I know that hurts and I know what that feels like. And I'm here to tell you, don't fight it. Try to observe it and even try to interview it. Ask the pain questions. Why do you feel this? What do you think is going to happen? What are you afraid is going to happen? Talk to it, have a conversation, try to figure it out. And as you do that, you're going to use the third technique that I'm going to talk to. Sounds to me like Coach Lee has read a little bit of David Hawkins. <laughs> that's, a, that's something that's in the Sedona Method and David Hawkins uh, letting go. Basically, it's not, not really talking to the pain, but basically coming to the idea or the realization that um, we are making the breakup, the pain of loss, way bigger than it really is. And everyone is starting out thinking, oh my God, this person that I just lost, I've been spending five years with them or whatever the case may be. And I'm going to lose them and I'm never going to have them again. And uh, you know, it sucks. And then what he's saying and what letting go and, and the books talk about is, look, maybe it's really not that bad, right? And a lot of people have a hard time wrapping their head around that. And I understand that, you know, this person meant a lot to you, but at the end of the day, you learned a lot of things and he's saying, have a conversation with your pain, right? But it, what that will do is that will give you a, a little bit of a, of a more fresh perspective when you're looking at it and you're like, do I really need to be controlled by this? Is this something that I should really be that scared of? That's the idea. To you about, and I call it the parenting technique. And it's basically where you treat this pain, this anxiety, this feeling, in your stomach, your chest, your throat, treat it like it's the child version of you and that you are going to work with your adult self to talk to your hurting child self. And you're gonna speak softly, you're gonna ask questions, why do you feel this way? Just like I was talking about, and you're going to comfort that feeling. Like, it'll be all right. Like, you know better. And you're basically dividing yourself into two parts. And you're not really doing this, but you're utilizing two different parts. One part of you knows that you have had relationships in the past, most of you, and that they have ended in breakups. You have been able to get over them, you've been able to move on, and you don't mourn those relationships anymore, at least not to a degree that's life altering. And so you're gonna remind yourself of that. You're going to share with yourself the stories of your past and how you have been able to move forward, but you're going to do it gently. You're not going to try to yell it. You're just gonna talk softly as though you were talking to this child inside of you that's hurting. And what a lot of people do, let me go back five seconds so we can get his point across, is they beat themselves up a whole lot. People beat themselves up throughout their entire breakup. I can't believe I didn't know this. I can't believe I let the, like a lot of guys will say uh, the same thing uh, because uh, a lot of the dudes that are coming to me for coaching, we usually come to the conclusion that um, the girl lost attraction. A lot of guys have a really hard time sustaining attraction over time, right? So when they come to me, they're like, oh, like, I, I can't believe I didn't know this, man. Oh my God, I'm, I'm a fucking idiot. They start talking about themselves like garbage, right? And this is right here is a really good way to be like, look, like, relax, it's okay, right? And I, and I see even, I tell my students, I'm like, look, like you didn't know. It's okay, you didn't know. It's not a big deal. Like now, now, you, know, now you know better because you can make a better choice. Awareness is first, choice is second. Okay, so when you make a better choice, right, then you can, um, so, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, let me go back. When you're aware, now you can make a better choice, okay? You're just gonna talk softly, as though you were talking to this child inside of you that's hurting. And the emotion of that pain will probably bring about thoughts. A lot of times, emotions create thoughts, and it's not our thoughts that cause us to feel these emotional difficulties, but it's the emotions itself that create thoughts, or at least create more thoughts. And so when those happen, you're going to thank the child version of you. You're gonna say, okay, thank you for that. Or thanks, buddy. Thanks, sweetie, whatever you call yourself, as though you're talking to a little child and you're just listening. And without trying to change it, you're gonna remind yourself of your past pain and how you did move on from it. But you're just going to allow the pain, the anxiety to just be there. And you're gonna sit with it and wait it out, just like you would a crying child. And a parent has left for work or they've left to go out of town and the child is sad and crying and the other parent is just sitting with them, waiting it out, being there for them, giving them some encouragement, but not trying to say, don't feel this way. They're just listening and it will pass. And that's something else you need to add to your repertoire. You need to add the knowledge that it will pass so that when you feel these emotions come on, you can tell yourself, 
it will pass. It's passed before. I'm going to talk to this pain. I'm going to parent this pain and it will pass and I'll feel better in a little bit. Number four is one of my favorites because I talk a lot about what do you feel? Do you feel love or do you feel loss? And it's really confusing because when you try to dial it down, a lot of times loss is the biggest part of all this. A lot of people have even told me things weren't going well in the relationship and I was even beginning to feel like maybe this wasn't the best. I've heard that a million times. Holy shit, it's funny because a lot of people will say like, oh, uh, like I've seen people on Chris Canwell's videos comment and be like, oh, you sound like just like Corey Wayne. And then I've seen Alpha Male Strategies videos. You sound like just like Corey Wayne. And I've seen in Corey Wayne videos, somebody who might've found somebody else. And they're like, oh, you sound like this guy. The truth is guys, the game is the game. The lessons are the lessons. Okay. Two plus two, two equals four in this case. Meaning when you learn attraction skills, relationship skills, and you learn how to communicate and you do all the same things, right? From our perspective, coaches, okay, we hear you guys say the same things over and over again. And we can usually bunch everything down into a small group of things. So again, I see a lot of guys that have a really hard time sustaining attraction over time, right? Because they don't understand how to how to pull back from relationships. So we see the same issues. So when, when, when one coach says something and then Craig Kenneth says another thing, and it's like, oh, you guys, you say the same thing. It's because the game is the game. That is what it is. Okay. There's no new information. That's why all the coaches sound the same. Uh, all everybody else sounds the fucking same because everyone, because there's no, the, 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 how to get to, you know, the good side of all of this information, which is a healthy relationship is just doing the, the same right things. Okay. It's like making money, delivering value at scale. That's how you make money. You want to want to make real money. You want to become a millionaire. All you have to do is be able to solve a lot of problems at scale, so that you can, you know, make money. Okay, so that's why I offer website stuff because it's like, okay, if you start building an asset, even if it takes a year or two to get that, if you're making a thousand bucks a month in two years, that's a thousand bucks a month you were not making two years ago. Okay, and if you're making even two thousand bucks a month in three years right? It'll keep compounding because you keep putting your money back into the site and into new sites and it just keeps compounding. That's exactly what I did, right? And I'm telling you, you guys, you guys don't need more. Like, okay, I'm not saying you shouldn't strive for this because I strive for this, but you don't need much more money than like eight grand a month. Seriously. Like, I mean, yeah, you know, everyone wants to fucking drive a nice car and shit like, and a lot of you guys don't truthfully, but, but let's just throw in like worst case scenario people out there. I want to drive a really nice Audi. I want to drive a truck. I want to do this. I want to have a really nice house. A lot of those bills will come up to like, you know, 3,500 to five grand, right? Okay, great. You have your job and then you have your website making you money. Okay. And if you're making 8,000, you still have 3,000 left over at, at, at worst case scenario, right? So you still have 3,000 to spend on like, you know, some other, like, like if all of your bills came up to 5,000, right? You still have 3,000 left over, right? So I'm telling you from my perspective and everybody that I know that's an entrepreneur, you don't need much more money than that. And here's the thing. Once you start going down that direction, you're going to just do it anyway because of what inputs you're making. If you make the right inputs, you get the right outputs. YouTube is a fantastic input output system because you can make one video and it can last forever, right? So that's the idea behind that. And then they broke up with me and all of a sudden, this is all I want in life. Maybe you can relate. Or maybe you thought things were great and it totally blindsided you. Either way, make a list of the negatives of the person and the relationship. And it might be difficult to do, but do it. Because what happens is that when you feel the loss, you romanticize the past and you make this into some perfect fairy tale Facts. where he's the knight in shining armor, she's the princess, and you're just going to ride off into the sunset. That's what was going to happen. And then they left. That's what your emotions and even your mind can sometimes tell you is that you have lost something so wonderful. It was perfect. Look what you've lost. It's pointing at the loss, not necessarily the love. And so if you can make a list of the negatives and remind yourself, take that sucker out, read it over. Because basically when you feel this stuff, you want to throw everything you can at it. Go down every one of these techniques that I'm mentioning and use it if you have to. And be patient as you go from one to the other. 
in your goal to feel better. But the list is important because you've got to push back against this loss that you've lost something so wonderful. You have. I understand that. A relationship is a wonderful thing and you two may yet get back together. That's not even the topic of this video. We're talking about this pain that you feel and being able to move with your life during the day to do the things you have to do and to emotionally heal. So don't think in terms of this is definitely not going to work. We are not getting back together and I've got to deal with that. If you feel comfortable telling yourself that and that's comforting, go with it. If not, then remind yourself, this is just for my healing. We may or may not get back together. That's not the issue right now. The issue is healing. And to help yourself heal, you need a negative list to remind yourself this wasn't all perfect. It's like stretching your muscles. You've got to get the full range of motion. And the same is true with your emotion. You need to be able to feel that this person was not perfect, that this relationship was not perfect. Was it good? Was it okay? Maybe. That's not even the issue. The issue is you need to feel that this is not 100%. This is not pure loss for you. That there are some things you can look at and see, maybe, maybe this could be a good thing for you. And stay with me on this because I know that that's actually a scary thought for some of you. But just remind yourself there are negatives. It's like pushing it one way to keep it from getting so one-sided that it's not in contact with reality. It's a flexibility exercise for your emotions. Get that negative list, write it down. Try to write five negative things about your ex. And the good thing about this video and why it's powerful, every one of you guys going through a breakup is trying to run from your emotions. You're trying to run from your problems. You're trying to run instead of face them head on. And because it hurts, I understand it hurts. I'm not going to say that it doesn't hurt because it fucking sucks. Um, but guys, honestly, facing your fears and facing your pain and facing it head on. I think that's something I was definitely like gifted with because I never ran from my problems when I was face faced with them. I always faced everything head on and I always got over relationships very quickly because in my mind, I assumed that it was over forever. So every single time that I was dealing with a, a breakup, I would just be like, nah, fuck you and just disappear. Right. And they always became, they always came chasing eventually. And I don't want you guys to hang on to that. That's why I don't like to say certain things in videos because a lot of guys will, will, will listen to me say a 10 minute speech and catch 30 seconds and like, Oh, hanging on to that because that's what they want to hear. But that's the goddamn truth. And I can't lie to you. So that's what happened with me. And I, it's because I had the energy, masculine energy to just literally walk away and say, fuck you, peace. And it hurts still, but it was because I didn't need or want the relationship anymore. Right. And that's what made me really happy, you know, and it worked. Don't worry. This isn't desecrating the relationship. This isn't saying what you two had was not special. This is simply letting you look at reality because no one is perfect. And no, their imperfections do not make them perfect. Even though your emotions will tell you that and your sense of wanting a fairy tale will tell you that, that's not reality. Make the negative list, look at it, remind yourself that there are negatives and this is not purely loss for you. The fifth step in letting go is probably the most challenging and it's gonna create pushback in a lot of you who are watching this, especially some of you guys, but let yourself cry. Stay with me because I know some of you guys are thinking, I don't really cry. I get that because I coach a lot of guys, just like I coach a lot of ladies. And I know that for most of you, there are differences between the two. If you're a crier, let yourself cry. The tears bring healing. It really is a refreshing type of thing. And be sure to blow out your air as you're crying. It's therapeutic and it's almost like you're blowing out some of the pain, but it can be something that is very healing for your body and for your mind and for your emotions. If you're not a crier, a lot of times you feel enough pain to cry. And that's something people often don't understand is that just because you're not crying, it doesn't mean you don't feel the pain. You just process it differently and you respond differently. But do the motions of crying, okay? And I'm not saying do this publicly, but go in your room, get some privacy, put your face into your hands. And so you put your hands like this and you sit with that for a few minutes until you feel like you're done, like you have accomplished something. And then you can actually talk to the pain and you can say, there, I've grieved. I've had enough time with this. I've felt this. I get it. I'm going to move on now, or I'm going to get on with my day now, or I'm going to do something else. And this step harkens back to number two, where I told you not to fight the feeling. It's where you basically tell yourself, it's okay. I'm actually taking this seriously. I'm still feeling this. So I'm not giving up. I'm not releasing them, so to speak, even though in some ways you are. And you may even have to tell yourself there, I'm paying the price because you will want to grieve this. It's almost like you feel like you're doing your due diligence, like you're doing what you're supposed to do in this situation. So you kind of have to trick yourself or you have to just go with it in some ways to be able to get to where you want to be. So crying or putting your face into your hands and then telling yourself, there, I did it. As though 
you are taking this seriously as though you do get what the situation is because some of that is you worry that maybe you don't know how bad this is. Have you ever had that moment where you're talking to yourself and you start to feel a little bit better and you remind yourself of how terrible it is? It's because you're afraid of not taking it seriously because you're afraid if you don't take it seriously, you won't get them back. And so in this way, you're telling yourself, there, I'm taking it seriously, so get off my back. I know I've gone over a lot and some of this is pretty heavy. I didn't know if I'd ever do a video like this because a lot of it happens on coaching calls with a coach on my staff, but this is important and I know that a lot of you have been asking for it. And so finally, I just thought that I would because I think it will help a lot of you. I do encourage you to go back and watch this video again because there's a lot going on here and some of you might even have wide eyes right now as though I don't even know where to begin. Go back. <laughs> Facts. So I also go over these on my coaching calls as well. It's something that a lot of guys have a, have a huge um, issue doing because I coach mostly men, right? It's like 90, 10, 90%, 10% percent, ten percent men to a female. And um, at the end of the day, you know, a lot of guys don't want to feel vulnerable anymore. They don't want to feel hurt. So they don't do a lot of the necessary, you know, things. But like I said, I faced everything head on and really in the back of my head, I just had an abundance mindset about it. I just, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to move forward and there's going to be another woman and developing that I think was the hardest thing to do. Uh, sorry, is the hardest thing to do for my students because they're like, look, like, uh, like, you know, she was the love of my life. I don't know what I'm going to do. Da, da, da. And it's like, look, and that's why I get so, one of the best things you can do as a man is start building something, start building uh, something big. That's why I, that's why I offer my website thing. You can do whatever you guys want. You can look up any kind of business and start it and just start a side hustle. Put your energy into something new. It doesn't have to be like, you know, something that's going to make you a million dollars. Okay. Look, it's just something new to build and you'll start being, becoming proud of it. And then eventually that could buy you freedom at some point. Okay. So, um, that's just me. You guys don't have to listen to me. Uh, it's just advice. So if you guys have any questions, uh, email me in the description box down below and I'll see you guys there.